after the last video, my sister, um, not the last one, but the one where I pulled out the books and I was like, these books will probably still be here. Days later, my sister texted me and was like, so I have to know, are the books still there? And I said, yes, of course, and sent her a photo of the, the books still stacked on the floor in front of the Papazon. And um, we might just be in that situation again. Only they're less, they're less in the way than they were before. are not in the order that I read them, but merely in the order that they are stacked up here. So, number one, we have I Was Told There'd Be Cake by Sloan Crosley. This is a book of essays. It is my favorite kind of paperback. That is especially, like, foldable. I don't know, I just love how kind of flimsy it feels, which sounds bad, but I like it because I'm able to hold it how I want to hold it when I'm reading and what's most comfortable for me. It just, they're, they're just my favorite kind. I don't know who Sloane Crosley is. Maybe I should, but she was funny. This was a really, a really nice book of just little essays about her life and particularly how even when you are very well intentioned, your life sometimes doesn't go well. It was nice. This is another um, ADHD tip. It was nice to have very short, um, the first essay is eight pages, uh, very short essays to get through. So I felt accomplishment even when I hadn't finished the entire book. There were small accomplishments that I could make along the way and that helped me build momentum and keep it up. So um, I, I don't remember what I rated this on Goodreads. I would say probably a three out of five. Then we have another book with smaller pieces. And this is American Housewife by Helen Ellis. The New York Times book review says that uh, Flannery O'Connor would turn green with evil parts sick and envy. This was apparently a national bestseller. But I recently learned that the New York Times bestseller list is not real and it you can kind of buy your way onto it. Um, so I don't believe anything I read anymore. There's a great and wild, very gothic um, <laughs> collection of short stories about housewives and they are all very dark but kind of tongue-in-cheek and it was a very fun read. This one earns a special place. This is Maya's Mountain, and it is the first book, I say that because there are sure to be more, that my dear friend, Arminda J. Roddy, the, I guess she dropped her middle name when she got married, I apologize, wrote. It is also the good kind of paperback, but it is about a young woman and her relationship with her faith in the time of an alien invasion. And Arminda published a book and I'm amazed and I'm so proud of her. She has been talking for forever, ever since I met her my freshman year of college about writing a book and here it is in my hand right now. Mine's Mountain, y'all. Check it out. Neil Gaiman has long been one of my very favorite authors. I actually got to see him in a storytelling it wasn't a competition and a storytelling tour where storytellers went around, I believe it was the southeastern United States, that's where I saw him in the Asheville area, and told stories. And it was one of the coolest events I have ever been to to this day. And I got to see Neil Gaiman tell a story. Um, it was beautiful, of course. Norse mythology. It is what it is. Um, he has rewritten Norse myths. And this was a book that my husband and I finished reading to each other um, at night. And 
It was good. I learned a lot about Norse mythology. Um, you don't learn a lot about Norse myths in school. But I wasn't awestruck by it like I am a lot of times with Gaiman's work. The next book is The Bullet Journal Method by Ryder Carroll. It is a beautiful book. I love The Golden Black. And it was an interesting book but it was a preachy self-help book too, because I actually really appreciate some of the tips that he gives in this book and in this method that he's created for planning called the bullet journal method. If you haven't heard of the bullet journal community, it is vast, uh, but I have really genuinely taken a few of the uh, methodologies that he talks about in this book and that he's developed and applied them to my planning and they truly have worked. Ryder Carroll does have ADHD as well and he this kind of his manifesto on a planning system that he created for himself because none of them worked for him because he did have ADHD and um, people have taken it and run with it and I commend them for that but bullet journaling in the true method of it I want to make it pretty but that takes too much time so it's too much effort for it to be a, a practical planning system for me. I don't know if Ryder Carroll is someone I would want to be friends with. And so reading this book kind of felt like I was hanging out with someone I probably wouldn't want to be friends with. This book. Maybe a five. Ho ho ho. What do we have to say about the seven husbands? of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. We have to say, it was beautiful. Great representation, um, excellent novel about the golden age of Hollywood and the intrigue and the sabotage and the betrayal that happens in it. And just so good. So good. Um, it's about Evelyn Hugo, uh, a kind of Marilyn Monroe figure who, she's a Cuban American. She whitewashes herself and embraces um, the fact that she could, she can, with some alterations to her appearance, uh, be white passing. And she does that and kind of erases this really important part of her past. I read this very quickly. Um, this was a book that I kind of felt that old feeling of being in middle school and going through, you know, a book of this size it, every two or three days. I had that feeling and I read it very quickly and 10 out of 10 would recommend. But this is Beasts of Extraordinary Circumstance by Ruth Emmy Lang. And this was interesting and fun. I really liked it. It's about a boy named Waylon Gray. It kind of follows him throughout his entire life. So he's a boy when it starts and then an adult later. I could be mis mispronouncing his name, but Waylon Gray and it follows him. He is different and he was raised by wolves is actually told from the perspective of the people who interact with him. Very different from anything I've really read before, and that was really refreshing. The Kiss Quotient. Now this one was a little spicy. The main character is an autistic woman, and she, she feels that she needs to get some experience in interacting with people. She wants to practice her relationship skills because she hasn't had any successful romantic relationships and she feels like it's because she is not the best at being a girlfriend. So she hires a male escort to teach her how to be a girlfriend. And it is a romance novel, so I think we can all, you know, determine what happens from there. It was a sweet, sweet book, but it kind of fell flat in some areas for me. One to watch, another book of the month. I think 
I said there were four Book of the Month books. There are only three. I counted that Ben Folds book as Book of the Month book, and it definitely isn't. Um, this is another romance. It's by Kate Stammen London. Um, it is a fun read. Don't expect anything too substantial from it. It's just a fun, like, beach read, read by the pool romance. And it is about a plus size fashion blogger who goes on to a TV show that is essentially The Bachelor slash Bachelorette as The Bachelorette and um, her experience on the show. The author does try to include some good representation. There is some uh, representation of asexuality, which I've actually, I cannot think of another book where I've encountered that at all, which is very sad. But um, I also feel like it may have been a little problematic. It felt kind of like it was competing to be the most woke book by including a lot of um, marginalized groups of people, but they didn't, um, it made it seem like she was just trying to cram in as many minorities as she could to make it seem like she was representing them, even though there was really no substantial representation, if that makes sense. At least she wrote about those characters, I guess. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Um, that they weren't fully fleshed out. My husband grew up in the Triangle area of North Carolina and is a pianist. So you can imagine that he loves this man right here. And I mean, don't we all? But A Dream About Lightning Bugs was fantastic. If you like Ben Folds and wanna know more about his life, um, it was well written. And this is another that we read together every night in bed and we finished it and it was great. So those are the books that I own that I read for my Goodreads reading challenge. I think filming for YouTube is 